we just completed our state diagram for the sequence detector 110. Remember, in the previous lecture, we said this was a Moore state machine. The Moore state machine is characterized by showing the outputs in each of the states, right? We determine what the output is, z equals zero in each of the present states. We only said z is equal to one, but we've detected the full sequence one, one, zero, the input sequence, so z becomes one. So for more machines, the outputs are only functions of the present state. All right, we completed our state diagram. We said our next step is to create a state transition table. So here then we start listing on a straight state transition table is we want to start accounting for the present state, our input values of X and our next state and our output values. So if we're gonna start creating a table, we'd at least start with these four columns. What is the present state? Right, we're going to account for that. What is input X? And then what is our next, next state based on the present state and our input? And then what is the output in each one of these states? So I've superimposed the state diagram here to remind us then of where we start. So we're gonna start in the present state of S0. We're in state S0. We said when our input X is a zero, then our next state is S0. So in state S0, when our input X is a zero, we stay in state S0. The output when we're in state S0 is a Z, right? So that's where this part of the table gets filled in. Then also, when we're in state S0, when X is a one, we transition from S0 to X1, to S1, sorry. Our next state is S1 whenever X is a one. Our output, remember, so the output when we fill that column in for a more state machine is only ever dependent on the present state. So notice here, in the present state of S0, we said our output at Z is always a zero, so the output zero, or state S0, comes from this column right here. Right. Let's transition then to the next slide. We're going to start filling in our table then, right, from the rest of the state diagram. We've already accounted for the present state of S0. So let's take a look at what happens when we're in state S1. So when we're in state S1, when X is a zero, our next state is S0. State S1, X is a zero, our next state is S0. When we're in state S1 and our input X is a one, so when we're in S1, X is a one, our next state is S2. We fill in the table here. S1, X is a one, our next state is S2. The output Z, that information comes from right here. When we're in state S1, no matter what our inputs are, as long as we're in state S1, our output Z will always be a zero. So notice here for present state of S1, Z is a zero, Z is a zero. All right. Now, when we're in state S2, so the present state is S2, when our input X is a zero, we transition to S3. So this line of the table gets filled in, S2, input X is a zero, next state is S3, our output then is a zero, right? Whenever we're in state, present state of S2, present state of S2, no matter what X is, our output will always be a zero. So no matter what the input, our output is always a zero because the output in a more state machine is only dependent on the present state. Finally, when we're in state S2 and our input X is a one, so when we're in state S2, our input X is a one, we're going to stay in state S2, right? Which is why we fill this in here. Finally now, when our present state is S3, so when our present state is S3, when our input X is a zero, so when X is a zero, our next state is S0. When we're in state S3, and our input X is a one, state S3, input X is a one, our next state is S1. Notice then, whenever we're in state S3, our output Z will always be a one. This is the only place, right, in our state diagram where the output Z is a one, when we're in state S3. All right, so what I'd suggest is, as you're following along with this, go ahead and start completing your own state table. Stop the video at this point, fill in the present states, fill in put the, all the values of X, and then see if you can complete then the next state and the outputs on your own. Write this down and keep following along and creating this with this. 
you're in my digital logic lecture class, you'll have homework similar to this. So this is a good practice problem for you to go back and see if you can recreate this. So follow along, create it as the video does. Stop the video, fill in your state transition table. Okay, so after we've done this, what is our next step? We want to take these present states and make binary representations of them. So we're going to expand our table. We use flip-flops to implement state machines. We're going to see that each flip-flop is going to store one bit of each state. Right? So we now need to determine how many flip-flops are needed. The number is determined by the number of states. We have four states. So two bits are, represented to re are needed to represent four unique states. Right? So two bits are needed, meaning we're going to need two flip-flops. And we're going to then take the names of S0, S1, S2, and create binary representations for them. So state S0 will be represented by the binary combination 00. S1 will be represented by the binary 01. S2, 10. S3, 11. Remember, as I said before, a flip-flop can store one bit. So we need two flip-flops to represent each of the four unique states, right? We need one flip-flop to, to, uh, to represent this bit of the state, and we need another flip-flop to represent the second bit of the state. So two flip-flops for this, our states. So we're now going to start changing the table. Right. In this case, then, we, I took the column state name, because I need two flip-flops. Our outputs of our flip-flops are Q, but I'm going to call the output of one Q1, the output of another one Q0. And we've got our input X. So our input to our finite state machine consists of X and it consists of the states, and the states are going to be represented by two bits, right? Here that we'll call Q1 in the present state, Q0 in the present state, right? So I've got S0, right? is now is represented as 0, 0. S0 is represented as 0, 0 here. S1 is represented as 0, 1. S1 is represented as 0, 1. S2, 1, 0. S3, 1, 1. And notice now, in my inputs, I have three input variables, Q1, Q0, and X. They can each have two states. Two cubed is eight. Here are my eight unique binary combinations in my input. Right? This is my state transition my state table and these are my inputs very similar to a truth table I do the same thing then with my outputs I take my state names and I convert them from their English names to their binary representations so state s0 is a 0 0 right and our next state we represent with q1 plus plus means next so present we just call q1 q1 and the next state is q1 plus q0 and the next state is q0 plus and our output Z. So this circuit then will have output of Z and each one of the flip-flops has an output, right? The next state output. So we just take then, we go ahead and fill this in. S1 is 0, 1, S0 is 0, 0, S2, 1, 0, and so forth to create this table. So you should try, like I said, follow along and do this right now. Right? As a matter of fact, if I bring up, let's see, a blank spreadsheet here, we maximize this. Let's go ahead and fill this in. So we said then our representation of S0, right, Q1 and Q2 represent our states. So I need a 0 and a 0 to represent state S0, right, a 0 and a 0. For state S1, I need a 0 and a 1. S1, I need a 0 and a 1. S2, I have a 1 and a 0, right, S2, a 1 and a 0. S2, 0, right? S3 is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Right, now, X, right, X can take on one of two values. X can be a 0 or a 1. X can be a 0 or a 1. 0, 1, 0, 1. And there are eight unique combina combinations. So our inputs are the present state inputs of each of the flip-flops, and then the value of our input X. Now, over here we said we were going to fill in our state name, and we did that before. We said when we're in state S0, and when our input's is 0, we're going to stay in state S0. Right? We represent S0 with a 0, 0. Right? 
more S0, and our input X was a 1, our next state was S1. S1 is represented by a 0, 1. And when we're in state S1, and our input X is a 0, we went back to state S0. So that is a 0, 0. And when we're in state S1, when our present state is S1, and our input is an X, our next state was S2, because that was a sequence one, that we'd received 1, 1. So S2 is represented by 1, 0. All right, when we're in S2, and our input is a zero, we went to, we transitioned to S3. We represent S3 with a one and a one, right? When we're in S, present state S2, and we received a one, remember we stayed in S2, so S2 is represented with a one zero. When we're in S3, and our input was a zero, we transitioned back to S0, and S0 is represented by a 0, 0. And we're in S3, present state, and our input was a 1. We transition to S1. S1 is represented with a 0, 1. That's how we fill in that part so far. Now, ignore these couple columns right now. I'll just hide them for right now. Let's make this look like the other. So we said then our output Z is dependent on our present state. Our present state is 0. Right? Our output Z is a 0 in every state except for S3, when we're in a state of S3, our output Z is a 1. And this matches then what we had here. This is how this was filled in. So after we do this, we have to then determine what type of flip-flop we want to implement our circuit. Right? And we have to determine the state equations based on that. So we could then use D flip-flops, we could use JK flip-flops, we could use T flip-flops to implement this circuit. And we're in all of our examples, we will work through how to use each one of these different types of flip-flops to implement our circuit. We'll need to add columns to the state table for the D, JK, and T flip-flop inputs. I will also need a method to determine these inputs. That method will be based on the characteristic flip-flop equations, Right, we'll create excitation tables, and that will those excitation tables will tell us the correct inputs actually for D, J, K, and T. Right. And so the excitation table will be the minimum inputs that we need to generate the next state, right? When the current state is known. That's the way we'll develop that. Right. So in the next lecture, then I will cover how we develop this excitation table of the D flip-flop.